Hello everybody y'all, welcome back to another video. Today we got another episode of reviewing NHL teams offseason so far as today we're going to be reviewing the Dallas Stars offseason as they were pretty quiet this past offseason. They had a terrific draft but free agency wise they were pretty quiet. They made some small depth moves signing some veteran players and also signing a nice veteran defenseman and Ryan Suter. But before we get into all that I'd like to just say if you are new to the channel make sure to slap that subscribe button and hit that like button as well that'll be very much appreciated boys so let's get into talking about the Dallas Stars because they had a pretty rough season last year they didn't make it into the playoffs you know there were some there were some moments at times with this team where they actually looked quite bright uh they didn't have Sagan throughout the year I'm pretty sure they didn't have Rajlov for a good amount yeah good amount of the year they didn't have Rajlov in the lineup either so they weren't a very healthy team they were dealing with a lot of injuries but it meant that a lot of players were able to show and shine uh players like a Jason Robertson was a perfect example uh who threw up 45 points in 51 games another player that was absolutely great was Rope Hintz there was a lot of players that you know really started to really shine for the Dallas Stars and going into this upcoming season I think as a Dallas Stars fan you know I, I think you guys should be really excited because there's a lot of good potential here with this team but you know we're not going to talk about you know the entire team just yet we're going to get into talking about what Jim Neal did with the Dallas Stars and what he did to improve the team because that was the biggest thing what did he do to improve this team this year um, now first up the Dallas Stars trade away Jason Dickinson who was a guy that was what made 2.65 million dollars there with the Canucks um, he was going to demand a lot more money than what the Dallas Stars were really wanting to give him uh, he gave up another 15 points this year with in 51 games he's more of a defensively minded forward and he's not a bad player at all but he just wasn't you know the pick that they wanted him to be um, he's been mostly you know a fourth liner depth forward and they, they went after like a guy like Luke Glendening to replace him, and they weren't going to be able to afford a guy like a Jason Dickinson. It just wasn't going to be in their, you know, in their plans to re-sign Jason Dickinson. It just wasn't in their plans to get him back onto the team. And seeing the stats that he put up, it wasn't too much, you know, fantastic stats. Plus, they got a decent third-round pick out of it as well and got a decent player out of it there in Ayrton Martino. Uh, and then the other trade was just a, uh, uh, practically, they sent uh, their first-round pick to the Dallas Stars uh, for, you know, three, uh, three picks in the first, a second, and a fifth, which is the thing that I really would like to talk about is their draft because I thought the Dallas Stars draft was really, really good this year. First up, they got Ryan Johnston, uh, which he didn't play a whole lot this year, but is a really nice looking prospect. I think he's more like a playmaker, but he played for the Windsor Spitfires, had 30 points in 53 games. I uh, didn't play a whole lot this year. I don't think the OHL really played uh, very many games, but he did play for the World Junior Team under 18. Uh, he put up four points in seven games. Not too bad for him. But the one guy that I think I'm really excited about and the guy that I think was the biggest deal and a lot of people are really excited about this kid is Logan Stan Coben. Uh, this was a guy that I was trying to pick in my fantasy team. Unfortunately, I was not able to. Um, but this was a player that I think most fans uh, for the Dallas Stars should be really excited about. This was a kid that was ripping it up there for the Thompson Blazers. 101 points in 38 games. I know that's when he was like really young. But this is a guy that could potentially be a really nice offensive guy for the Dallas Stars. Uh, put up 10 points in 6 games when he played in the WHL. Did great for the World Juniors there for Team Canada. This is a guy that you know you should be really excited about. A nice winger. Um, this is going to be a really, really nice player for the Dallas Stars moving forward. Now, I don't know a whole lot about him, of course, but I've just heard a lot of good things about him. And I think, honestly, as Dallas Stars fans, you should be pretty excited. And this draft was really good. You know, they made small little moves to get a lot of, a lot of picks, right? Train away their 15th overall to get three picks and also train away Dickinson to get another pick. And I think they did a really good job of getting an abundance of picks when you didn't make it to the playoffs might as well do that and try to bolster up and, and make some good selections which i think the dallas stars did that certainly very well and, and this team is getting older by the day it, it's not a team that's getting young their average age is 29.1 and their average age for their defenseman is almost hitting 30 and their goaltenders at 33.3 this is a very old team here in dallas and a lot of their main contributors like pavelski and radulov are up very much up there in age so starting to draft and develop those types of players are very pivotal for your team moving forward so 
for free agency. Now, the only player that they actually really lost was Jamie Alexiak. Um, that was the only player they lost to the, the uh, Seattle Kraken expansion draft. And, I mean, we haven't really talked a whole lot about the Seattle Kraken throughout every, you know, episode uh, with reviewing NHL teams so far, just because of the fact that there wasn't a whole lot of big players that, you know, was lost to the expansion draft. Plus, I keep forgetting to talk about them. But, like, for Colorado, they only lost, you know, Don Scoy and Columbus, they only lost, you know, Gavin Bayweather or whatever the hell his name is, right? They didn't lose a whole lot. And with Dallas, you know, they did lose Jamie Alexiak, which was a huge loss. And they ended up replacing him with Ryan Suter, which... I don't know if this is the ideal situation for them. You know, signing this guy to a four-year contract on a no-movement clause, uh, none of that. Like, just that contract alone is dumb, I, I think, for, um, you know, for the Dallas Stars. I don't think it's the greatest move in the world to lock up a guy that's already 36 years old and is already, you know, on a bit of a decline. I know you got him at a decent contract, $3.65 million, but for four years, man, <sighs> I don't know if I really like that. His offensive numbers are not bad. He puts up some really solid offensive numbers. His defensive numbers are something to be questioned about over these past few years there in Minnesota. He wasn't the strongest defenseman in the world. And watching him, I'm not a big fan of Brian Suter. I don't mind his offensive game, but compared to the other defensemen there in Minnesota, like Spurgeon, like a Brodeen, those were your guys that were, you know, your best defensemen. Suter was aight. And I don't know how necessarily he's going to do here in, in, with the Dallas Stars or who he's going to be playing alongside of. If he plays with Heskinen, um, I can't, I don't know why I can't say his name right now, but uh, Mira Heskinen, if he play, I think that's how you say it. But anyways, if he plays alongside of him, that could be a really good defense parent because Heskinen's more of your two-way defender while Ryan Suter is more of your offensive guy. He doesn't play very well defensively anymore. So I, I think this is not a bad deal, but sign a guy to a four-year contract at the age of 36, and especially, is he only going to get paid 800 grand a year? I think that's what it's going to be. But I mean, I think he could have went for maybe, maybe a three-year contract, but at best, a two-year contract is what it should have been, and it should have been half of that, and maybe not even a no-movement clause. I feel like that's a lot for a guy that is very, very old, and when you already got so many old guys locked up on your team. I just th didn't think it was the greatest idea. Uh, and then they also signed Jan Hankapa, which I thought was a pretty smart deal. Three years at 1.5. He's a really, 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 really solid defensive defenseman for the back end there. Um, if he plays some top six minutes, could be very useful. Uh, Luke Glennon, same with him. He's just a defensive forward. Um, Going to be, you know, useful for depth. Two years at 1.5. Not bad. Uh, definitely not the greatest contract. I was really glad that, you know, the Oilers didn't pick him up because... He really doesn't bring anything offensively. He just brings defense, which also was, you know, another another move that really didn't make sense was bringing in Michael Raffle, another guy that hasn't really been doing much, has been kind of traded around the league, is another veteran leadership guy. Um, you know, maybe it's because they lost Cogliano, Cogliano and that's a replacement for him. I don't think it's the, the greatest replacement in the world. I think it kind of got worse. And then the biggest move that they made throughout the, the offseason was getting back Heskinen to a eight-year, $8.45 million deal, locking up the youngster in him, which I think was a very smart idea. Now, we're going to take a look at his JFresh analytics, which are right here. Now, I'd like to just say, uh, make sure to go check out JFresh. The link will be down in the uh, link in the description below uh, for his Patreon. Make sure to go check it out. Now, if you look at him, it's not bad. He's definitely not worth that amount of money right now, the 8.4. He's definitely not worth that amount of money with the way that he's looking. He had that great playoffs. There's no doubt about that, that he had amazing playoffs that, uh, that year when they made it all the way to the Stanley Cup Finals. He was terrific for the Dallas Stars, no doubt about that. But you take a look at his regular season stats, it's definitely not the greatest looking thing right now. And, you know, he had a little bit of a down year. Now, maybe they'll go back up when they make it into the playoffs. And maybe he'll do a little bit better next year. We'll have to see. But his defensive game has been improving. Uh, it went down a little bit, but so did his offensive game. I'm going to be pretty excited to see how well he'll do it going into next year. We'll have to see what happens, though. I think he could possibly build into that contract. I think Huskinen will be, you know, that top two defenseman forever for the Dallas Stars. And locking up uh, him up on an eight-year, $8.4 million deal could be a steal you know a lot of the defensemen out there like Darnell Nurse uh, like Seth Jones have just been paid you know big bucks like 9.5 million dollars and he got Huskinen 
at a mil cheaper and could possibly play at the same level as those guys, maybe even better than a Darnell Nurse or uh, a Seth Jones. Uh, if he continues to go in the way that he is going, he could be a better defenseman than most of those guys. And he's already putting up better defense numbers than both of those guys anyways combined. Even if you were to throw Darnell Nurse and Seth Jones' numbers together, they would still be better, or Huskinen would still be better than both of those guys combined. So I think this contract could possibly look like a steal here in a few years. Right now, though, it's definitely not the greatest looking contract. Contract, but I think you know two years into that contract asking him once he gets up there in that Norse talk I think that contract could be an absolute steal now he's not going to be a super flashy defenseman he isn't like he's definitely going to show periods of that but his defensive game I think is just it's better than you know a lot of the other defensemen out there Huskinen is not your flashier defenseman compared to Makar or McAvoy or Fox he's more of your you know very nice skating no doubt about that not down anything about Huskinen skating and his offensive game but he's more of a laid-back defenseman more than the other guys that I was just talking about but he does show uh, some flashy stuff, and uh, I'm a big fan of Heskinen. I, I loved him during that playoff run, and I loved him during last year. Um, you know, he wasn't as much, you know, productive as usual, but I think he could still be a very good defenseman for the Dallas Stars. And then uh, Curry Ranta, they re-signed him back to a deal, and I think that was basically it. And got Brain Halpy, which I thought this move was a little bit of a weird one. They also got Kumo back to a year deal, which wasn't a bad one either, but... I thought the Brain Halpy move was a little weird because their goaltending, you know, is a bit stacked going into this upcoming season. Of course, we don't know what's going to happen with Ben Bishop, but why the hell sign Brayden Halpy when you got a young stud in Jake Ollinger who started 29 games and put up a really respectable record? Why not go with him? I mean, they might go with him. Maybe they're just seeing, you know, how well will Brain Halpy do. But I think it was a really weird signing, in my personal opinion. Unless, you know, Anton Hudobin has some kind of injury problem. Uh, I don't know. I don't necessarily know. But I, I don't agree with the move. I don't know why they made the move. Brain Halpy is not the goalie you go after, in my personal opinion. If you were to go after a guy to be a backup and to be an extra goalie or something, because we've seen the 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 regression of Brain Halpy over the past two years. He has not been that man. His analytics look like crap. He is not a good goalie anymore, and I think Jake Oninger is the better choice over Brain Halpy. So, it was a little weird to sign Brain Halpy and now have a log jam in that, you know, that goaltending area, it, especially if Ben Bishop comes back. Are you going to be, you know, training away Hudobin? What are you going to be doing with Halpy? What are you going to be doing with Jake Ollinger are you going to be playing him this year or are you just going to be leaving him on the back burner I'm interested to see what they're going to be doing I'm most likely guessing that Jake Ollinger will be one of the goalies playing this year and maybe it's a battle between Hudobin and Halpy but I don't see Halpy winning that goaltending battle sorry I just I don't and I think most of you guys would agree with me on that but uh, let's take a look at the defenseman as well. Lindell Klimberg. Uh, of course, Suter might be playing alongside of Huskinen. Like I, what I said, I think that would be a very good defensive pairing. Uh, now that might lower the offense numbers of Huskinen because he might have to focus more on defense uh, than, you know, Suter, right? Suter is going to be playing more of that offensive game uh, if he's if they're going to be playing alongside of each other. And then Hankapa and Sakara, I really like that defensive pairing uh, for that top six. Plus, it's really cheap for how good that defensive pairing might be. Um, then depth wise, if you play Luke Lennon and Michael Raffle as that, you know, that third line, then that's, or as that fourth line, that's great. Uh, and honestly, looking at this team, it's a pretty good looking team. And this is a team that could potentially make it into the playoffs. But the one thing is staying healthy. That was the one problem that they had last year was staying healthy. They, you know, lost a bunch of man games. Sagan didn't play majority of the season. They didn't have Radulov. They lost Rope Hints for a decent amount of games. Can this team stay healthy? And if they can, I could see this team make it into the playoffs. But the biggest thing is that this team has to stay healthy moving forward. And that's the biggest thing here for the Dallas Stars. But I think I'm going to end the video here, you guys. But before I do, I'm going to give this team a grade. And I think, honestly, with the moves that they did, they didn't do a whole lot. They lost Alexiak and they replaced it with Suter, which I don't really like that move. The Suter contract, first of all, was too, too long. Four years, way too long. And now you're locked up with Liddell, Suter, and Eskinen. And Suter's already at 36 years old. I don't think it's the smartest move in the move uh, in the world. Um, and, and replacing it for Alexiak, 
it's tough to replace Alexiak, especially with how well he was playing alongside of Heskinen. It's tough. Brain Halpy, I didn't think it was the smartest move either. Glendening and Raffle, they're in moves. You know, they're not going to produce a lot of offense for you. And you, you already look at those, you know, numbers in that depth area. They don't get a lot of offense numbers from these guys unless they're focusing all on defense. They're not a bad idea. But I think I'm going to give this team, you know, a C. I think I'm going to give them a C at best because I don't like a lot of their moves. They didn't have the greatest offseason in the world. They didn't add a whole lot. Um, just, you know, you know, Rope Hints and Jason Robertson, if they keep going up, which is looking like they will, they'll be fantastic players. But I think the biggest thing is this team has to stay healthy and they really didn't add a whole lot of specialness. Did the steam, excuse me. Uh, but I'm going to give him a C. But for right now, guys, I'm going to end the video here. Tell me, guys, in the comment section below what you guys thought of uh, the Dallas Stars offseason and what grade you would give this team. And uh, I'm going to end the video here, guys. Thank you very much for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe. And I'll see you guys all in the next one. Adios. Amigo.